Balancing on a knife sounds like a pretty good metaphor to describe the difficulties of controlling a nuclear chain reaction, but I think it's not, and I will explain why. Perhaps this is not the most common misconception about nuclear power reactors and nuclear chain reactions, but certainly it is a common one. But what makes it special to me is the fact that it is common among people who do have a technical or a scientific background. The common misconceptions concerning the difficulties of controlling chain reactions in nuclear power reactors result from oversimplified descriptions of this process. Even Veritasium, who is really taking care about being as scientifically correct and precise as possible, mixed up this one. Most descriptions point out that uranium-235 can be split by slow neutrons, releasing an average of 2.5 new neutrons that can split more atoms, re releasing even more neutrons and a lot of energy. Now, if there is any neutron flying around, it can start this chain reaction and all you have to do is absorbing enough neutrons so that the reaction rate does not increase indefinitely. Now you can use all the heat generated by this reaction to boil some water and for example turn a steam turbine. Some descriptions also point out that a nuclear weapon relies on the same principle but does not control the nuclear chain reaction by absorbing some neutrons with control rods. Without these additional neutrons, a nuclear reactor would need to run with an effective nu neutron multiplication ratio of exactly one in order to run with constant power. With these additional neutrons, the reactor is able to run with an effective neutron multiplication ra ratio slightly lower than one, which means that the reaction chains are not indefinitely long. As long as this is true, the reactor power is and remains proportional to the neutron flux provided by a startup neutron source. If you had a very very strong neutron source that allows you to adjust the number of neutrons released per second, you would in fact be able to control a nuclear power reactor entirely by adjusting the power of your neutron source. As soon as the effective neutron multiplication ratio reaches or even surpasses one, it is a completely different story. In this scenario, the reactor power will not remain proportional to any neutron flux provided by a neutron source. The power of the reactor will ramp up until you bring down the reaction ratio by absorbing some neutrons. This is what I would call balancing on a knife edge. How fast the reactor power ramps up depends on the effective neutron multiplication ratio and on something called delayed neutrons. The so-called delayed neutrons are released by the nuclear fission, but not instantly like most of them, but in seconds and minutes after the, re the fission occurred. Of course, they also contribute to the total effective neutron multiplication ratio, but because they are delayed, you could also regard them as some kind of neutron source that produces a flux that is proportional to the power of the reactor in the last few seconds. The bigger the fraction of these delayed neutrons and the neutrons from the startup neutron source, the easier it becomes to control the reaction. The fraction of delayed neutrons depends on the nuclear fuel. For example, plutonium and other heavier elements produce less delayed neutrons than uranium, which makes it much more challenging to use them as a nuclear fuel. This can be compensated by using a much stronger neutron source, such as in the Belgium reactor project Mira. You may be wondering how reactivity accidents like in Chernobyl could happen. This is due to something called positive void coefficient. In a nutshell, this means that increasing the temperature also increases the effective neutron multiplication ratio, which increases the reactivity and then further increases the temperature. The Soviet reactor type RBMK, for example, was moderated by graphite and light water. Unfortunately, light water absorbs more neutrons, so that the neutron loss decreases as the temperature rises and more water boils away. This is why criticality accidents can happen in some reactor designs, but can be avoided when choosing a different combination of coolant and moderator. And of course, a startup neutron source. Of course, this does not mean that current nuclear reactors cannot fail. But when they fail, the cause will be something different. That's it for this video, thanks for watching.